The first time I went to Kid Museum, it was just like, it was really exciting. I saw the drills and I saw the heat guns. I was really amazed. And it just really opened my eyes to realize that we could make something new. The collaboration between Kid Museum and Parkland has been one of the most valuable experiences that these students have had in their educational careers. Being at Kid Museum, you can explore. You can, your mind is free to think any way you want. And they have materials where you can do what you want to do. So when we turn on a light, the output is turning on. It's putting out energy in the form of light. It gives the students another opportunity to experience something that they would not be able to experience in a regular classroom. Even some kids that weren't sure about it at first, you know, after that very first visit, they were sold. In regular school, we don't really have the ability to express our minds freely. They give you limitations, there's a time limit, there's constraints. At Kid Museum, we get to create our own rubric. We got to choose what we wanted to do and how we do it, instead of like them telling, you gotta do this and you do that. The Invent the Future Challenge poses the question, what will you make to protect life on this planet? So my team was Rachel, Ingrid, and Tatiana. We were trying to solve an environmental problem. It was important because this world is gonna belong to us soon. At first, we had many challenges because we could not agree on a single idea. And then Kelly came one day and she had this like wonderful idea. We were learning about how a lot of different water areas lead to the Chesapeake Bay. And then I started thinking, hmm, some water from storm drains also lead to the Chesapeake Bay. Maybe those two are connected with a pollution problem. It was a really good idea to clean our watershed, which affects many parts of our country. We built the water washer to filtrate water, and the water gets eventually sent to the bay. And it actually did work, and it wasn't just a prototype. Three, two, one. They were taking home their project and they wanted to keep refining. They were coming in every single day during lunch. And I just saw, uh, you know, a happiness, a, a glitter in their eye. Then the Invent the Future Challenge Summit happened and one of the Kid Museum employees came up and said, you know, do you have a team that would want to share in front of the cafeteria? And I said, absolutely. And we were like, yeah, that's cool. But then once we were like closer to the summit, as we got closer, we got really excited. And we didn't expect it to be that important. It was like really a, a huge deal for us. So the day before, we had not finished the project yet. And it was a very chaotic day. And we were in this whole crazy rush that we had to finish. There was a lot of headaches and a lot of scratching heads and banging journals. It was very stressful, but we worked together and we completed it. The best part of the challenge was to go to the actual competition. Because when we got to like introduce a project to the people, like we were just so like grateful and they were so astonished that like 12 year old girls can do something like this. The first round went really well. When we saw the judges coming, we presented it to them and we were really prepared. After the judges had met with them, and one of the girls just went, yes! I think it was Ingrid. Ingrid goes, yes! It was important to me because I got to show them the ideas that me and my friends had so we could express ourselves through the idea. The second round that the judges came in, there was some bumps. The presentation wasn't the best. We weren't prepared to present to the second round of judges. Um, when the results came back, we were like excited because we thought we were going to win, but we weren't nominated for any of the categories. We did not win and we were mostly disappointed. Our confidence level went really down. That day, I felt really upset about it. I put that trophy that we were gonna get at the forefront of thinking that that's what mattered when we left this, that we needed this recognition. We put everything we had into that Invent the Future Summit. And Monday happened and then four girls show up in the library and they said, Mr. Sugar, we wanna, can we, can we be here for, for lunch? And I said, no, I'm sorry, we're close today. And they said, oh, well, we just really wanted to talk about our project. And I said, oh, 
Okay, then you can stay. I'll be here. We came back to school and decided to meet up in the library. Hey, maybe we should talk about what we could fix because the design process, you know, that's the last step, trying to see what you could fix. We got on the computers and we made a list of things we could improve on it. And I realized that that trophy meant nothing. They learned that the, there is no end to designing something. There is no end to learning. I'm proud of how persistent we were. At some points, we felt like giving up. Like, we felt like we weren't going to finish. But we didn't give up on the project. So, to this day, I still keep their project in my library. It's, it's my trophy. It always reminds me that it's never about uh, some kind of prize, but it's all about growing. And Kid Museum gave me that. It gave me the realization that we always need to adapt and change and rebuild and maybe even throw it all away and start over again. And all of that's okay. Working on the challenge project really did bring us closer. It made us work together and it made us compromise. And it made us realize that not all of our ideas can be put into the project, but all of our ideas combined it could. I feel like every student should have this opportunity. We didn't expect it to be such a huge impact to our lives. I'm proud to say that I was part of Kid Museum.